The theme today is The Bible Proves Post-Tribulation Rapture and how to prepare for the Great Tribulation. And, um, <clears throat> you know, there are many people who believe in um, pre-tribulation or mid-tribulation rapture. Actually, the Bible is very clear that the rapture happens after the Great Tribulation. And uh, all the support of pre- or mid-tribulation it just um, it's not from biblical exegesis. It's not from explanation of the Bible passages. It's from uh, like a, a thought they put into the Bible. I'm going to show that to you very clearly uh, that Christians have to face a tribulation and and the Bible says God is in control. So facing the tribulation means that we are in the hand of God totally because uh, you know some people say why why do we have to go through tribulation now the Bible doesn't say exactly but in the history of Christianity we find that when people go through tribulation persecution they actually their faith becomes stronger because they can only depend on God they cannot depend on anything else and now the Christians can depend on the money in the bank, can depend on the family and friends and the company. And so Christians generally don't depend on God totally. But in the Great Tribulation, if people want to be saved, want to be uh, stay in the salvation of God, they cannot worship the beast or receive the, uh, the seal of the beast. And at that time, anyone who don't receive the beast will be killed. So they have to face the threat of being killed. And so Christians have to rely on God totally for their life. And uh, so at that time, I believe that the revival will come when the Christians can only rely on God. When Christians rely on themselves, they have different kinds of problems, spiritual problems. But when God, people depend on God only, then we have, uh, then we have the strength from God because the tribulation is actually in the hand of God. It's God um, who initiates the great tribulation. The the why do I say that? Because the Bible says that uh, the the seven seal, the seven trumpet, the seven bowls, and the seven thunders, they were all initiated by angels, not by men not by the devil. So we know that the, all the suffering in the tribulation came from God. And God also, in the great tribulation, He will show to the world how evil the devil is, how evil uh, the people who follow God, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, the, how evil the people who don't follow God, how evil they are. So uh, that um, is at that time, people can see there is the um, power of God, the holy power of God, and the evil power of the devil. So at that time, people can see the work of God as well as the work of the devil. So do people want to follow God, the holy God, or to follow the evil devil? So it will be a time of testing. And when Christians depend on God only, God's power will manifest greatly among the Christians. <clears throat> now for those who don't understand the Great Tribulation, that Matthew 24, 15 is one place that it says very clearly, uh, therefore when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads let him understand. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So the tribulation time will be 
characterized by the abomination of desolation that um, this person is a person of abomination of total um, evil of desolation of destruction of damnation and generally the Christians call him the Antichrist who will stand in the holy place <clears throat> So at such a time when such a person who is against God, but he stands in the holy place, and let him understand. So what does that mean? Let him understand. So there are two main interpretations of this holy place. One interpretation is the temple in Jerusalem. Another interpretation is in the church. So whatever it is, let Christians discern when such and Antichrist, uh, this person, the abomination of desolation, when he appears, that he claims to be God, that will discern this is a time of the great tribulation. And Jesus said, this tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world, until this time, no, nor ever shall be. So there has never been such a persecution before or after. And then for the sake of the elects, these days will be shortened. Now the Bible, when it talks about the elect, it's not just the Jews. That in some Bible verses, Paul, in, his, in the letters of Paul, he talks about the elect being the, includes the Gentile Christians also. So this is not just for the uh, Jews, but also for the Gentile Christians. So this is the great tribulation. And, um, you know, when we look at the passages of the Great Tribulation, anyone who read the passage would not find pre-tribulation uh, rapture there. That the rapture, it doesn't say at all that the rapture, the rapture means, that's in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, that the Christian will be caught up into the clouds to be together with Jesus. Um, when Jesus comes back. When anyone read the passage, they would just say, when Jesus comes back, he will lift up the Christians into the clouds to be with him. They will not see a pre-tribulation. That means before the tribulation that the Christian will be raptured. But because uh, since this idea of pre-tribulation rapture, that means Christians will be raptured before the tribulation. They don't have to go through that. It was greatly welcomed by people because then they think they don't have to go through uh, the tribulation. So people like that. But people don't discern it. So I'm going to show you from the Bible very clearly. I'm not, uh, uh, you know, it's not speaking for myself. Now actually, let me tell you, when I first became a Christian, there was a missionary that came to our church and he held a English Sunday school uh, and then he said, anyone who wants uh, to study the Bible in English can ha join this English Sunday school. So I joined. And then he told us about uh, the rapture is before the tribulation. And he introduced a book to us. And at that time, I totally believed that the rapture was before the tribulation. But I went to Simpson College, a Bible college of the Christian and Missionary Alliance Church. When I studied there, and one time there was a panel on at the end of the world, and there was a professor of Greek and the New Testament stood up and he said, I studied the New Testament in Greek, and I did not find any support of the tribulation, the rapture happening before the tribulation. He said, I did not find any support at all for the rapture to happen before the tribulation. And I was shocked because I thought that was from the Bible. So I you know, did what, I, what he said, and I studied through the New Testament <clears throat> in Greek and English and compared, and I found that the Bible really does clearly say that the rapture is after the tribulation is when Jesus descends to judge the whole world. And I'm going to show you, actually, I'm going to show you the passages. Actually, I myself have studied through this many, many times. 
because there were many people who argued that you know that there are proofs of uh, pre-tribulation rapture, and uh, some of them argue with me, and I study and study and study and found that the evidence is very clear. And when we can find clear evidence from passages, then uh, then it's firm. When it's from clear passages, it shows that the rapture happens after the tribulation, then it's confirmed. Okay, the first passage is Second Thessalonians 2, 2, 1. Let's read through this. Now, brethren, concerning the coming and the Greek word is parousia, of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our gathering together to Him. We ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letters, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Now, Paul was talking about concerning, so this passage he's talking about concerning the coming the second coming of Jesus. Now in the next slide, I show you that the word parousia, and you can search online 3952 Greek, and you'll find this word parousia. This is in Greek. When used with Jesus, it's all about His glorious return in front of all people at the end of the world. So all these passages talks about Jesus' second coming in glory. So 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 to 10 is talking about the return of Jesus at the end of the world when the Antichrist is destroyed by His glory. Now actually this passage does talk about that, that um, the Antichrist whom the Lord will consume with the breath of His mouth and destroy with the brightness of His coming parousia. Now parousia is the original Greek. So, in verse 1, he talked about parousia. In verse 9, he also talked, verse 8, he also talked about parousia. So he is talking about the same thing. Through the whole passage, he's talking about the same thing. The return of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together with Him. Now when you see that, naturally, we'll un you understand this. Jesus will return and then will be gathered to him, to, uh, together with him. That's the natural uh, interpretation. So he's talking about Jesus returning, and then we will gather with him. So it's not two separate things. But the uh, uh, pre-tribulation rapture uh, people, they will say uh, they're two different things, that they will gather seven years or three and a half years before Jesus' second coming. But in this passage, it's one thing that he talks about one thing, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together with Him. So the whole passage talk about Jesus coming back and then we'll be gathered with Him. Okay, and then so this passage at the end and then he talks about the coming you know, the, his parousia, his coming. So we look at what he's saying here. That we ask you not to be shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter. So anyone, any spirit, any word, any letter, any person, as if from us, as if it is from us, but it's not from us. As though the day of Christ had come, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away or apostasy comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of prediction, that is the Antichrist. Now Paul said that, do not be shaken by anyone as though the day of Christ had come. So he's talking about the day when Jesus comes back and will be gathered to Him. So he's talking about the second coming of Jesus. So when he talk about here the day of Christ, it naturally, he's talking about the same thing, the coming, the parousia of Jesus Christ. And also actually here at the end, in, uh, at, 
in verse 8, it also says parousia. So we know that the day of Christ and that day both talk about the same day when Jesus will return. Uh, we must establish very, this very clearly that he's talking about the second coming of Jesus and then he talk about that if anyone says that as though the day of Christ had already come, do not be deceived, do not be shaken. If someone says the day of Christ has already come, let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come now. That day, of course, he would talk about the day of the Christ, of Christ, because he's talking about the same thing all through the passage. The second coming of Jesus and the day of Christ, that day will not come, and the coming of Christ. Okay? So he said that that day will not come until there is a falling away, a apostasy comes first. That word means that many Christians will fall away. There will be a day when many people will fall away from Jesus. When you see that day, you know that the end of the world will come soon. And then also, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of prediction, son of uh, uh, damnation, that this man, also described by um, Jesus in Matthew 24 as the abomination of desolation. So this man will come. The first, you know, that there will be a falling away of the Christians, and then this man of sin, the, the Antichrist will come, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship. So he exalts himself above all that is called God, so that he sits as God in the temple of God. So he will sit in the temple of God as God, so showing himself that he is God, that he shows himself to be God, but he's not God, he's Antichrist. And then the lawless one, referring to the Antichrist, will be revealed whom the Lord will con consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming, parousia. So when this lawless man comes, when his time is up, then the Lord will consume with his breath and uh, destroy with the brightness of his coming. So he'll come down and destroy him with the brightness of his coming. So Paul was saying in this passage concerning the coming of Jesus Christ. And then Jesus will come and then we'll be gathered to him concerning this fact. I'm going to tell you the day of Christ. That is the day when Jesus comes back and we'll be gathered to him. The day will not come until there will be a falling away, apostasy of many Christians. So first, there will be many Christians falling away. And then this Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of prediction, will appear and does his work to tell people, to deceive people, that saying that he is God. But Jesus himself, himself will come back. Will, he will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. So Jesus will consume him, destroy him when he comes back. So Paul was saying concerning the second coming of Jesus and then we will be gathered to him. Do not be deceived if someone tell you that day has already come, that day has not come. First, there will be two things that will happen. First, many Christians will fall away from God. Second, the Antichrist will appear and he will deceive many people to think that he is, this, he is God and he will sit in the temple of God. And then Jesus Christ himself will come back to descend, to come, parousia, come and destroy him with his breath. So what um, Paul was saying is, the Christians will be gathered to him, will be gathered to be with Jesus when he comes back, and the time of his coming back is after the falling away of many Christians, and also the son of prediction, 
the man of sin, the Antichrist will be destroyed by the glory of Jesus' second coming. So that means Christian will meet Jesus, including Paul. Now notice that it has the word our gathering. Now I'm going to show you in the four passages, including this one, that Paul include himself in all these four passages. So that means that is a time when Paul will be gathered together with Jesus. After, the time will be after the apostasy and the Antichrist will appear and destroy by Jesus' second coming. So when, according to the book of Revelation, when would the Antichrist be active? Now, chapter 13 of Revelation is one chapter that talks much about the work of the Antichrist. And that is the time of the tribulation, the great tribulation. And also Jesus said that also in Matthew 24, when this, desolate, uh, this uh, abomination of desolation, that so uh, Jesus will come back uh, uh, after the great, uh, the great tribulation, when the abomination of desolation uh, after his period of time. So what he's saying here, Christian have to go through the time when the Antichrist is active. And the time the Antichrist is active is during the Great Tribulation. Now nobody, nobody uh, disagree with this. That in Matthew 24, it says very clearly that this is the time of the Great Tribulation that he'll be standing in the holy place and this is a great tribulation that that you have not seen since the beginning of the world or ever so that this will be the day of the great tribulation and then Christians will go through this and we will gather to Jesus after the great tribulation when Jesus will come down to destroy the Antichrist. Now this passage is very, very clear. It's very clear about the time of Jesus' second coming. When the Bible is clear on something, we don't disagree with it. We dare not, because that's the Word of God. When we disagree with the Word of God, we're disagreeing with God Himself. Okay, so this passage <coughs> um, that says very clearly, concerning the second coming of Jesus and for us to gather to Him is after the apostasy, the falling away of many Christians and also the Antichrist will appear and then Jesus will destroy Him. That's the time when the parousia will happen. Jesus will come down and destroy Him. So concerning this coming of our Lord and we will gather, including Paul will be gathered, is after when the Antichrist was destroyed, when the Antichrist will be destroyed by the second coming of Jesus. Okay, so here I show you this parousia is when used about Jesus, it's always about the return of Jesus to the whole world. That and then he destroyed the Antichrist by his glory. Okay, and the second passage we talk about also here we see Paul using our so it's also concerning him that he's also involved in this in the first passage uh, oh I'm sorry this is the same passage that is our okay now uh, now we go to the second passage 1 Corinthians 15 52 it says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Now here Paul also includes we, that means Paul is included. In one moment, this is a short moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. So this last trumpet sound is in one moment. It's not a long sound. It's one moment. 
the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Now, at the time when Paul wrote he was alive and he didn't realize, he didn't include himself with the people who are dead because he didn't know the time of second coming. He, although he knows this revelation from God, but he did not know when he will be, uh, when Jesus will come back. So he assumed that he is the one who is still alive. And, but now we know that Paul is already dead. So the dead will be raised incorruptible. That includes Paul himself. So Paul will be raised from the dead at the last trumpet. And then also he will be changed. He will be changed. He will be changed from corruptible to incorruption. The, in, the corruptible must put on, the word is used in Greek, must. It must happen. The corruptible body will become incorruption. And this mortal body must put on immortality. Right now, our body can get sick. We can get old. So we are corruptible and we are mortal. But one day when this last trumpet sounds, we'll be raised from the dead and we'll be changed to become immortal and immor uh, incorruptible. So at that time, suddenly we'll be changed to be like Jesus. That's what uh, we'll, I'll show you in another passage. But basically that we'll have the glory of God upon us. That we'll be like the saints who are in heaven now that have the glory of God. And then when this happened, when the corruptible has put on incorruption, at this time that this is fulfilled, death is swallowed up in victory. So in the last trumpet, when Paul and the Christians who are dead already will be raised, and then together with the Christians who are alive will be changed. So this talk about the time of his resurrection and transformation. He will be transformed and then he will become incorruptible. And that is the time when death is swallowed up in victory. That means there is no more death. Death is over. It is swallowed up in victory. That God has conquered death. Oh death, what is, where is your victory? You know, that death has no more victory. That death is swallowed up is no more. There is no more death. In the, in the time of the Great Persecution, the Great Tribulation, Christians will still be killed. So there will still be death. So when there is no more death, that is after the Great Tribulation. That when Jesus comes back, then G Christians will be changed. So it says here, Christians will be changed. So when they are changed, they don't die anymore. So all the dead Christians will rise from the dead, and all the living Christians will put on incorruption. All the living Christians will be transformed to become incorruptible and together with the, the saints who were dead and they rise from the dead and they will all together will become incorruptible and so there is no more death. Christians don't die anymore. So this is very clear that, that the time when Paul will be raised from the dead and gather together with Jesus. That's what Second Corinthians just now we saw that concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering. So when Jesus comes back, Paul will be gathered and so here that will be changed, changed so this is time when we'll be changed and no more death. That means that is also the time of Jesus' second coming, that Jesus comes back and there is no more death and the Christian will become uh, incorruptible. And in the Great Tribulation, there is still death. So when we are gathered to, together with Him, there's no more death. That would be after the Great Tribulation because during the Great Tribulation, there is still death for the Christians. The Christians will be killed, but after the Tribulation, no more killing of Christians. So Christians 
uh, death is swallowed up for us. Now, here I explain it more. Uh, Revelation 13, 15. As many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So during the tribulation, the Christians who don't worship the beast will be killed. So they are still killing in the great tribulation. So if there is no more death, death is swallowed up. That means no more in victory. That means that is the time when the great tribulation is over. Okay, and then this passage, 1 Thessalonians 4.15, is a passage that talks about the rapture. We who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. So we Christians who are alive and remain, now here again Paul includes himself, we, and here we. Until the coming, uh, again this word parousia, of the Lord. Now when Paul uses the word parousia in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and then 1 Corinthians chapter 4, both talk about the coming of Jesus. This second uh, Thessalonians chapter 2 concerning the coming of our Lord and our gathering and the parousia here, parousia here. And then here in First Thessalon uh, First Thessalonians chapter 4, he also talked about parousia, the coming of the Lord. Of course, it would mean the same thing. And also the description is the same thing. That those who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord Jesus will by no means precede those who are asleep. Those who are asleep means those who are dead. So we cannot see the coming of Jesus before those who are dead. That means they will see Jesus' second coming together. Because down below it explained, because they will rise first. They will rise first. So they, then all the Christians will see Jesus' second coming together. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven. Now this is very clear. It's the second coming of Jesus. He will come back descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. Now in 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, no, uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, it talks about the last trumpet. So here again, it talks about the trumpet. So there will be the Lord himself will descend and with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel. Archangel means the head angel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. So that dead Christians will rise from the dead first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, raptured. You know, that's the word that many people use uh, to mean rapture. Together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Now in this passage, what it says is this that the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with the shout, with the sound of the archangel, and then the trumpet, and then the dead Christians will rise from the dead, and then we who are alive uh, will, also, will be caught up together with them to, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So when the dead Christians will rise from the dead, together with the Christians who are alive, will be caught up, will be raptured together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Then we'll always be with the Lord forever. Now Philippians 3.20, also Paul used the word we. We also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to His glorious body. So this is the passage that talk about when Jesus comes back. We're waiting for the Savior, the Lord Jesus, who will come back and then He will transform our humble, lowly body that it will be conformed to His glorious body. That means our body will be changed. So this passage says that when Jesus comes back, Christian will be transformed 
to have a body like Jesus, glorious body, that our body would be like His glorious, conformed to His glorious body, would be like His glorious body. Now, let's look at this. We, we, we. Let me ask you this question. How many times will Paul be raised from the dead? How many times will Paul be transformed to be like Jesus? Only one time, right? He will not be raised from the dead and then transform and glorious and then die again and rise from the dead and transform again. So when it talks about Jesus' resurrection, uh, I'm sorry, when it talks about Paul's resurrection and the resurrection of the Christian, that has to be one event. One event. So, when Jesus comes back, we'll be transformed. So that's Paul talking about him and other Christians. And here, he talks about the rising from the dead, and that will include him because he already died. And then those who are alive will be caught up to be with Jesus. So when they are caught up with Jesus, they will be transformed to be like his glorious body because that's what the Bible says when we are with the Lord, we wait for the Lord, and when He comes back, we'll be transformed. So when Paul will be raised from the dead, and then together with the other Christians caught up, raptured, together to Jesus, then also Paul will be transformed. So this is the time of Jesus' second coming. When Jesus comes back, the Christians will be transformed, and the Christians will rise from the dead. Okay, let's look back at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 52 to 54. There we shall be changed, and uh, sorry, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So here it talks about Paul will be raised from the dead and changed. So this locks the time with Second, uh, with First Thessalonians. Chapter 4, the same time that Paul will be, will rise from the dead, and when he rises from the dead, he will be transformed to be like Jesus. And then he'll be caught up. So here it talks about Paul's rising from the dead. And when he rises from the dead and meet Jesus, he will be transformed. Therefore, this is the same time as Second Thessalonians chapter two, when he's gathered, when he's gathered to Jesus, also because uh, in Philippians chapter three it says that when we are with him, then we'll be transformed to conform to his glorious body. So here, Paul will also be transformed. To the glorious, to be like the glorious body of Jesus Christ, and also in First Corinthians, Corinthians fifteen, there it says that that he will rise from the dead and he will be transformed. Mm -hmm.